the 29th of June, 2022. Thanks for tuning in to my official YouTube channel. Make sure to like my official YouTube videos. Go to my website, www.susanmeeling.com, which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com. Make sure to subscribe to my official YouTube channel. And if you're going to leave a comment, make sure to have etiquette and respect. So, I have explained to people since the 1980s, mainly 1989 for this, that my biological little sister was going to be a problem. People in Asher Holmes Elementary School asked me why. And I said, my fuck who? I don't understand what she meant. But she said she wanted to China my biological little sister, as far as this is concerned. In school, she tried using the term bukkum and bukku. She was informed that the only way she was allowed to address them was as great grandma, great grandma, great grandma, and great grandpa, or just grandma and grandpa, for short. Sure. In Asher Holmes Elementary School, the following weekend, my biological little sister ran around going and telling them that she had a buck going and a buck poo, which she didn't have. She had a grandparent. It was a massively huge issue. People from Asher Holmes Elementary School who actually do remember know that there were a lot of problems because of that. Not only because of my biological little sister doing things that were problematic each and every time, because essentially what it was is at Old Tenet Presbyterian Church, I had been the lead. She wasn't ever the lead. In dance, I wasn't interested in. She didn't ever get picked for a solo. And yet, in gymnastics, that's where it's a solo thing. Same thing with martial arts. And so where I had made attempts to explain to her, if you want a solo, go and do something where you actually earn on your own without riding somebody else's coattails. I actually had to deal with a multitude of stuff only because my biological little sister continued to run her mouth instead of shutting the fuck up. She literally was told that when we went up to New York City when I was in first grade several times, I had informed my fuck on and my fuck who that she had been running her mouth at school. My fuck who contacted a couple people, found out that my biological had been using that term. There was a huge altercation. Anna tried to claim it wasn't that big of a deal. Mike had said, you know, um, maybe, maybe, I'm looking at the time, by the way, just in case some people are sleeping in it, regards of where I look, you know. Anyway, so, She was literally informed it was a disrespect to my buckum and my buck any time she would ever use that word. My buckum and my buck very much went on a tirade. Had to contact some of the people that were in their circle to inform them that my biological little sister was not allowed to use that term at all. Now, this is later in the 1990s. This is actually a part of certain issues between Mike and my buck Gump was because Anna had told Patricia she couldn't, but she couldn't at all. She 
did not have permission to. And so while Mike had no idea as to how bad it was at those times, I literally was dealing with all of this because my biological little sister needs to be exactly as Mike has brought up in reference to the trauma. Comment and take the time for her to shut the fuck up because, come on, this is ridiculous. So if those particular factors where she was not ever allowed at all, in any capacity, to this day she's not allowed in any capacity as to any work of mine. When I sent the books that I sent to my biological father, it was not addressed to Anna. It was not addressed to my biological little sister. It was addressed directly to Mike. was not addressed for them. The only thing in regards of was literally, this is the amount of needless problems that your wife calls. And so I actually did something with my life despite the crap, not in the fullest term as to the letter, and written by the way, garbage that I didn't need. Don't pretend, by the way, that I wouldn't have written and authored and compiled the books I had without that. Again, as I've brought up in my official YouTube channel, in the year of 2009, if these needless problems had not occurred, I would have authored everything. I wouldn't have needed the McCoy Elementary School to put into the paperwork regarding finding a silver lining. If you go to my book section, there's through my website, www.susanbegin.com, you have that capacity to read through the link to get to Amazon. I am the one and only original Lady Bolio. Period and end of story. And so, similarly, I wouldn't be surprised, because then there's the reality of what my book crew has warned, that if my biological mother did not curb check my biological little sister, my biological little sister was going to be chided one way or another. Flat out. She was not ever going to. The name she was supposed to have is something I don't know. I don't remember, and I'm glad I don't, to be quite honest. I wish I could, just so that I could actually rub it in, but I can't. So, it is as it is. Now, in regards to quite a few other situations throughout the state of Texas, I made attempt after attempt, specifically from the pagan community, I made attempts in the Mormons with what I knew they were doing. Then it was, oh, well, it, it doesn't have to be that. No, it does. It does. Absolutely does. If they did not, this is what happened. In 2002, I had told my biological And I told him where I was in regards to 2001. My biological little sister heard Mike and I talking. You were on a military installation? And it was, you better curb check that bitch because there is no need for her involvement. My biological father said, it's not that big of a deal. No, it is. It's a big problem. It's a huge problem. Now, in the year 2022, those people are the reasons why a bunch of needless problems have occurred in the general aspects as to active duty National Guard reserve.
service, but most importantly, veterans. Because if people, and I would guesstimate, I would guesstimate this, people who do not have little siblings that have been veterans and or older siblings, but especially little ones, probably haven't ever had any real issues in regards to the civilian sector while being a veteran. I would guesstimate that. Anybody who has had an older sibling, I wouldn't be capable to give that viewpoint. But I guarantee people who have younger, little siblings, whatever age difference, have always had a bunch of crap that stirred up because their little sibling wanted to be a part of something that wasn't for them to be a part of. I would guesstimate as well that when those little siblings tried to say and would stir up all these needless problems, trying to claim that they were so much closer when they were younger, when in reality, no, they weren't. I would guesstimate that, whether or not it was during I would guesstimate even in peacetime, there are plenty of people who have had little siblings that stirred that up. And, and, I would guesstimate that people who didn't have siblings at all got having become friends with someone who did as to a little sibling. Whenever they notice certain problems in their lives, Probably at some point in time, it could be traced back to somebody's little sibling. The only difference I would guesstimate is if there was an older sibling who did not get to suck the bottom line, then I would guesstimate they would be no different than the little sibling aspect. When I say that, I translate that to if they had wanted to go, but they couldn't. You know, whether it was because of they couldn't go to ROTC because of whatever, or they couldn't actually sign the dotted line because they wanted to claim something such as, um, well, I was really busy in my, you know, the 1960s and 1970s. They do the equivalent of the Vietnam Dodge drafting sort of wording. It's my guesstimation. And then, their younger sibling would have dealt with the similar sort of factors. I would guesstimate that. Now whether and what percentage of accuracy, I'm not certain. But I would guesstimate anybody who has that sort of situation, and then the same in regards to anyone specifically known to have a military connection of whatever capacity. I would guesstimate that. And because of how people think about law enforcement, so law enforcement individuals who have dealt with people who, I pay my taxes and blah, 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 blah. Well, military guys are willing to go overseas. So law enforcement individuals that have pulled over people for speeding tickets that have tried using that, I would guesstimate that they have the exact same type of viewpoint when it comes to anybody who is active in the National Guard or service and or veteran, possibly even dependent in comparison. So I don't know how to prove that particular aspect, though I wouldn't be surprised that anybody who would actually think that just because they pay their taxes, especially, especially if they have argued with any law enforcement officer about how they pay taxes. And all those particular factors, trying to claim that just because of, in comparison. I would guesstimate that. Additionally, I would guesstimate any law enforcement who would have that sort of similarity as to little siblings. I would guesstimate in comparison, it would be, well, can you do me a solid? Can you do me a solid? Can you do, can you do me a favor? And then, well, when does that favor actually get you back? The 
as far as that's concerned. So, you know, because it's just your, it's just your reference. It's just your own personal legacy. See, that's something that, despite certain factors, individuals who try to avoid taking accountability for their stupidity because it's their responsibility, they know for a fact, internally, that they cannot hide from themselves at all. In any way, in any shape, or in any form. At all. For example, from March of 2020 as to the news regarding the COVID situation. People have had to stay wherever as part of the initial quarantine and you saw what occurred. You saw people that panicked and ran to the store to go get toilet paper and paper towels and all that sort of stuff. They completely freaked out. As soon as it was a mask situation, they had to have whatever as far as. In my opinion, and this is my opinion only, if they did that only for themselves and they did not share initially, they are not worth it, in my opinion. If they went to the store and got what they needed for themselves, and maybe a little bit of extra, but didn't go and, you know, deplete everything. I would, I would leave that as, well, they're mindful of themselves and they're mindful of others. And that's, of course, if they could. Because of the reality in certain situations. Now, whether that's in reference to ordering stuff as far as emergency purposes and all that. Now, you could take in consideration something completely different. I have ordered a lot of corsets at once. That's not an emergency situation, necessarily. It's not a factor regarding quite a few, however you want to put it. It's because I personally like the corset. So for me, corsetry is really no different than well, realistically, um, going and getting a bunch of hair tools and shoes and shirts. And, you know, it's, it's a wardrobe. It's my outfit. It's, it's what I feel most, I have the sensation of most comfort in. It's just my preference. I taught myself how to corset myself. I taught myself that. I didn't ever have a video that taught me how to do it. I didn't ever have anybody put me in a corset when I first started getting them. I didn't have that. I did it myself. I've done it myself from the beginning of when I started getting corsets. I wasn't ever interested at the very few times that anybody asked to tie up my corset when it was a corset that would be similar to this, I allowed them one chance. If they could not lace my corset up correctly one time, I did not want to have them lace my corset. I'm very particular when it comes to that because I know what is comfortable for me. The only time I have ever been okay-ish with somebody lacing up a corset for me is when there's no front plus and it's just a pure piece of fabric with the boning. Otherwise, even with that, if they mess up my corset as far as lacing it and I find out, so for example, an exotic Easter. There was a female who was assigned to putting my corset on me because the individual who was supposed to be there to do that decided to have a little titty baby little bitch temper tantrum because he didn't 
bring the mask that he wanted to wear. He saw what people were wearing at that exotic Easter in 2011, thought that it mattered when he was supposed to do a job. He was not supposed to go and do anything other than what I actually needed. And instead, because my car is looking for a little light, went all over different areas and missed that. He missed more, he missed the first part, the second part, and half of the third part of that three, what have you, aspect of that performance. And because he wasn't there before the third part, I had to have whoever was available in regards of to lace up my corset. And what she did, if you look at the pictures, it's not the way it's supposed to be worn. However, I made it work. And so I handled the situations as best as I could. Thankfully, I always wore pasties especially in a corset where it, in this capacity, wasn't covered. I refused in that aspect of. And so if it was told to do that, then that's a different factor in regards of shaming. Because that is quite shameful. And so, but there's also those that had thought, I had learned afterwards, the, a bunch of girls that had thought that they deserve whatever because of whatever line of something or whatever their viewpoint was regarding Temple of Life. And instead, I just didn't bother with certain things. And they didn't even remember me anyway in reference to if they were involved in 2004 or 2005. My hair wasn't the same, had tattoos afterwards and stuff like that. And so maybe one of them I had, <laughs> sadly, at this point maybe, defended. And, you know, usually what happened was the male complained and then was all, I'm going to take you to Steve or I'm going to take you to Krista and we'll tell them on you. And then they go and, all right, fine, let's go. All right, let's go. But no, that's fine. And yeah, yeah, you should totally be so scared. Let's go. Let's rumble. Yeah, you should totally be so scared. O okay, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Yeah. And then we get to either Steve and or Krista. And then it was usually, you see her, and yeah, just so you know. And then he'd tell on himself for assaulting somebody without their consent. And that I stopped it. And then usually they were escorted out, <laughs> you know, in comparison to other situations. And so they, it went the way it did, as far as that was concerned. Because that happened usually, usually per night at what was the blue ballroom. Usually it was on average about two times a night, which Steve and Krista would be capable to clarify on that. And then in reference, but that's, that was 2005 mainly. So in regards of Sapphire, which is an ironic aspect as to the compared to the blue ballroom um, situation, those particular situations of how many times, as far as I was concerned, as to how many, well, those you know, as far as how many complaints were at that point in time. And so while some people had whatever opinions they may have had, it was as it was. So, in reference to these needless problems regarding my biological little sister, anything that I get involved in, so there is this book series, it's a three-volume book series, and that, that's the event 
adventures of Susan Meelings through the diaper extraordinaire, as well as the book Modern Day Book. It's my book section on my website, www.susanmeeling.com, which is the same as www.ladystorybell.com. has the links for Amazon. So, my biological little sister would do something similar to what I dealt with in scuba diving. Oh, I went and talked with this person and said, they're my friend now. And they're not, I'm not like, they could be your friend, but they're my friend now. It's what I dealt with as a child. That's whatever. I'm not a little bit about You're so overdramatic. You probably don't like that I'm friends with your friend. I didn't, bef like, really beforehand, didn't really care, but if you're going to be like that, well, I'm not willing to save you if anything happens. Keep that in mind. And it got, because it got to that point where she would stir up needless drama with them, and then she'd want me to come and save her. Nope, I'm done with that. No go. Nope. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. I had only done so in a small amount of situations when I figured out she was purposefully doing that because she was one of those who had wanted attention in that capacity. It was, I don't have, I don't have time for that. And so her thing in reference to that was, well, you said you wanted to save the world. Yeah, because of my nightmare. The, the world is more than you. And so as a child, she had this huge problem with that. And so she'd do all these things. She'd purposefully do it too. So she'd go up to people and be like, I'm Susan's little sister. And they'd be, depending on the situation, so in regards of, it's ironically, in Taekwondo, she'd go do that. And they'd be like, Okay, well, are you going to be a part of Taekwondo? When she would, would say, no, I don't want to. I'm too good for that. Well, then, you know, I dealt with it because anybody who knows what people in martial arts are. So then there was that on the mat, as far as that was concerned. So then, you know, later on, in regards to, uh, what's another, uh, oh, another example would be, <laughs> A chorus line. And so, <sighs> she went up to some of the other people who were a part of it. And she was like, I know Susan. And th this is why I don't like coattail riders. And they were like, okay, whatever. And then I would, you know, she's in the, I go to Broadway plays so, you know, the closest you could be to her is through me, which is not the truth, actually, in any capacity. It's absolutely a lie, which I called her out on in St. John Vianney High School. And she had said, why? Because we're not that close. For you to try to claim that the closest way to me is through you is a lie because I don't like you. And so the only way to be close to me is to actually get to know me and be close to me. Otherwise, absolutely not. There's no capacity where anybody will ever have that sensation and I promise you that. My biological little sister tried in St. John Vianney High School. It was the second weekend of the performance. And she had said, well, why not? And I said, because the reality is you are not me. You won't ever have the capability to do anything in the capacity that I do ever. And while you can practice, but see, here's the thing. If you practice, you fail automatically because you cannot be me 
and practice. If you practice to do that, you automatically, with each and every practice, you fail. And that's the reality. And in St. John Vianney High School, no, it's not the same. Actually, yes it is. Each and every time, think about it this way. Each and every time you practice at dance, you have to practice that dance. It's not a dance that you came up with. That's why you have to practice it. So because you also do not have the sight, you don't have the capacity to ever do so. You won't ever be good enough. So just remember, each and every time you practice, that is your own internal admission that you yourself know, understand, and comprehend that you are practicing. And no, you won't ever attain perfection. My biological little sister started throwing a temper tantrum. Some of the individuals, as far as the males came by, they were like, yeah, what up, Susan? And it's like, oh, this is just a, well, so she's, so we're kind of related-ish. Oh, well, how are you kind of related? You're either related or not. Oh, well, um, I, I, I really prefer not to go there because, like, I don't want to be, and so the guy was, well, how couldn't you, what do you mean? Well, we're biologically related. She's my biological little sister. But she's just nothing like me. She does try, though. Everything that I do, she tries to do. And in some capacities, here's the thing. You know how we practice this dance and so on and so forth? And the guy was like, yeah. By the way, you know, you want to not <laughs> That's not smart at all. Uh, this is it. She tries to pretend to be someone she's not. There will be a day that she realizes that all she has ever done is practice to be what she is not. There's a day that she will acknowledge and have to accept to herself that all she has done is practice to be someone she was not ever meant to be. That is the kindest thing I can say. This guy was just, wow, why would you ever try to be someone you're not? And her response was what my biological mother would say. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, I was told. No, it's not at all whatsoever. And so even, and that was what that male had said. And if I remember correctly, it was the male who did the, the baseball one. If I remember correctly, that was, and he, he was much more, it was as it was when he said it. <laughs> Nonetheless, she had complained about it. And it was one of those, it doesn't change the facts. So then if you take in consideration track and field, which anybody from St. John Vianney High School can think of a few situations in that capacity. So one point in time, because especially the first year when I was a freshman, biological little sister, oh, do we really have to be here at the stupid track meet? As I was walking by on the other side of the fence. I look over and I just, you know what, you don't have to be here at all. My biological little sister, yay, that's great, whatever, whatever, whatever. Mike was like, no, we're going to, we're going to do, but I don't want to, whatever, and threw a temper tantrum. And so uh, I think her name was Stephanie, and Stephanie was like, what the, like, what is that? And I was like, oh, are you talking about me or her? 
And she was like, I was being mean about you, Susan. And it was very whatever. Her name was Stephanie Massio. Like, no offense. Um, I really don't need <laughs> any more meanness. Believe, believe me. And her response was, you don't know what mean is. And it's like, I guarantee. So take a look at them right now. And she and we were in the the track lanes, and she was like, "Okay, I had to look, take a good long look at my biological mother. Okay, take a good long look at my biological father. Okay, take a good long look at my biological little sister. Okay, there will be a day where you can take a look at everything you've done, and you will even feel shame." And she was just. I can do whatever I want. You don't know anything. I promise you. I promise you. And she was just, whatever. You don't know anything about me. If you actually, there, there, there is no need for that. And her response was, yeah, well, I'll do this, and I'm going to run this school, and I'm going to run this, and I'm going to run that. And it was, and you'll miss out on life if you do things that way, just so you know. And you are not allowed to have any jealousy because if you make the choice to do things that way, in comparison, do not ever be jealous of anybody who goes and lives their life because you want that life. You are making that choice for yourself to be in that capacity. You don't have to. You could live a life of any whatever because, I mean, seriously, compared to me. But you'll make the choice. This is it is. So there were a few other factors. Then there's one in regards of, I think her name was Mary. She was a ginger redhead. And she had tripped over one of the hurdles and fell. It was actually um, one of the races I was supposed to run. But it was one of those, no, it's fine. I had to be the ringer in, or the bloater is a normal term, but it's a ringer. Um, in any path, <laughs> in anything. But that particular track meet, I had to do... Um, it was one of those, I didn't do, I don't think I did any running in that particular track meet because I was needed in discus, shot put, and long jump, and I already normally did high jump. And so, um, you know, <laughs> uh, I, I was, I could do a bunch of stuff. And so Mary, ginger redhead, really pale, it was sophomore year if I remember, she tripped and fell. And she, her, it happens. Those who have been in track and field, it happens. She tripped, and her foot essentially, I think, from what she said, it got caught because she didn't have high enough of a leap. And as per anybody who's done track and field knows, that, that happens. Well, instead of getting up, she laid there and started crying. She didn't do anything, she just laid there and started, just got into the fetal position. And now this is after for the clarification, so that way I can give you what actually happened before. And so essentially, I'm gonna pause right there. So after her race, while I'm doing high jump, I'm, I, I already finished my long jump aspect, and I had already done shot put, but I had to do discus after the other uh, others had planned practicing for high jump, and Mary runs over, and ginger redhead Mary, and her face is red, and she's got tears rolling down her eye, and she walks up to me. What's wrong? You know, I literally was going to go do a jump, and then I was just hurry. What's wrong? Like, I, I literally, so for those who know high jump, I literally had kicked up and started to arch my back and then I just oh, what's up? What's wrong? And she just tears and all this anybody who knows. 
And so she's like, there was this mean guy. What? Because to me, what what is this? She, and so I am confused. What is your problem? And so she tells me about the, I think it was the hundred one-time hurdles. And she goes, and that after I made that in the fetal position, and I started crying because I started dragging my leg along the macadam. Uh-huh. There was this mean guy. Oh, shit. <laughs> She's like, I said, I, I kind of started to move it and like move the arm over and over. And, 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 and. internal thoughts? Oh, shit. <laughs> I know exactly how this went. Maybe if you had done that with your biological little sister, it wouldn't have been a whole lot. But anyway. <laughs> she had said she tried to. And this male had <laughs> get the fuck up and run. <laughs> Was he kind of olivey tannish in color? <laughs> She showed me her legs, they got all fucked up. <laughs> and it was okay. And so she just had little scratches from the from the uh, the hurdles. And it was just one of those. So why are you crying? And she was like, You just scared me that much. Did anything else happen? And she was like, No, 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 it was so scary. I look over to the to the stands and I'm like, so I go, you see that guy with whatever shirt he was wearing? She's like, yeah, that's him, that's that's him, yes, that's who, yeah, that's him. Did he do anything else? And she was like, what happened after you crossed the line? <laughs> Did he say anything else? No. That's it. Yes, you don't understand how scary he is. So then? <laughs> Needless drama in the in the girls track team. I'm sure there are those. 
and she played this, and the other section played this, and so on and so forth. <laughs> and it's just, what the? And so she stands up and she goes, thanks for saving me from him. If you think that I saved you from him. We got a different definition of saving. <laughs> and uh, I can tell you right now, you are not allowed to complain about that at all. Whatsoever. And she's like, why not? And I said, because I guarantee you, I am speaking from a I know that guy could uh, give you something to cry about. <laughs> and she was, no, 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 And so anyway, after that, got in the van, and Patricia, say whenever you want to say this, and whenever you want to say this, and whenever, whenever. <laughs> to go to, uh, in, I think it was 2003 or 2004, I, I hated this one tour. I hated it. My, my son and my daughter, they, they played with it. They had no idea how much it annoyed me, mainly because of my headaches and migraines. I didn't actually know what it did. I just hear, <laughs> and like, <laughs> it was like, a, it, so anybody who knows Elmo, Okay, and so it was the chicken dance Elmo. I didn't ever see what it did. I just heard my son and my daughter going, you know, kind of do whatever it was for that particular toy. Ugh, that's so annoying. Ugh, and the, it, and so I had, I know that there are parents who have had this issue. Okay, <laughs> but those kids. <laughs> the chicken dance elbow, the way it moved its head when I got to see what it did, looked like my biological little sister. <laughs> Just as foolish. And so it was as it was. And so she tried, you know, well, you only do this. Well, you do that. <laughs> of my life. And so her issue was, if you go in last, then you're going to go on a boat far, far away from me. Oh. And this is when I first got the invitation, mind you. Far, far, far away from me? Like far, 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 far? Uh-huh. Do you really want to abandon me by knowing you already have your own room? Because we shared a room until I was 13 years old. When I was 13 years old, that's when I finally got my own room. You're, you're going to abandon me to go on a boat? Yeah. Uh, I'm not abandoned. joke in 2009. I'm sure that there are some classes that could be the equivalent of one or a few of my 26 scuba diving certifications as to the additional research that I had completed while <laughs> earning my 26 scuba diving certification. And so, you know, and since the sea levels have risen, well, I guess, and, 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 and there's literally a purgatory Texas, so you know, by technicality, those who know Catholicism or any text, so heaven is at the uh, 
Purgatory is in the middle, which is at Ivy Beach. It's near Austin and San Marcos. Okay. <laughs> so anything in South Texas is technically, by the definition of, through Catholicism, technically a South. By technicality. I had no idea there was a Purgatory Creek in the state of Texas <laughs> when I created the bed that I had. However, <laughs> literally, Texas actually can be considered a hell. Because it's also hot, and hot, and really fucking hot. So, you know. <laughs> Maybe that's why they have their saying, God bless Texas. Though, possibly, that's also why they do their them. Maybe there is something in the water. And so, <laughs> although that Purgatory Creek was, hmm, hmm, it really wasn't a creek when I saw it. So it went the way it did, as far as I was concerned. Just, it went the way it did. I don't know if it ever actually was a creek. I could see where it could have been at some point in time. don't understand that. So I always, usually, nine out of ten times, it was either, well, okay, so nine out of ten times, I was usually first, second, or third, or whatever overall placement to whichever area I was in. That's why I was, it, we called it, I was a floater, but realistically, I was the rake, because it was a, it was a code, as far as that. And so, as far as St. John Vianney High School, so that's why I was in so many different areas and all that stuff. My scooter diving certification in 26 I found was pretty much was kind of similar in those rounds. And so, if so, probably I, I don't want to. I'd say like when I was involved with whichever aspect, it was usually so about two thirds of the time. Ironically, I was usually second or third place in every one of, so usually if I was in second place, I was also in one aspect, I was in second place in the entire class. If I was in first place, I was always in first place, and that was just it. And so third place, it wasn't ever where it was, that was the weird one. I didn't ever always just place in third, and all across the aspect of, Usually, if I placed in third, it was in one category, but it was still a placing. And um, and the, the, the other teammates at the rail were not passing, as, you know, as it was, or depending on where we were. So it was just, it, for those who understand that point system. And so it went the way it did. I wasn't always placing the And it just boosted the area regarding that. So that's how districts are. You get to a certain point level, and, and then you have to maintain and sustain that point level. Otherwise, it goes the way it does. And so I had to explain that in the car and my biological little sister. I don't understand how you need to do this place because it's not the same thing as jail at all whatsoever. Track and field is literally the one particular sport where each individual assists the team, but it's of their own particular work as to what they've installed. And so that was that. But when it came to marine and science technology school, I can't go to that. So it's the next grade. Now far, far away from me, like far, 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 far. Like, how far are we talking? Because it's probably not far enough. And <laughs> you already abandoned, this is her word, you already abandoned me by going and moving into your own room. I looked at Mike with that. And when she had said that in the van, 
look at that. You don't ever have to worry about that. You got that. And he was, so what? You should probably think about that. That seems like, it, like you should, because like, I can't explain that to her. And so it went the way it did. And then we moved from New Jersey to Illinois, as far as that was concerned. And so then anybody who was in school with my biological little sister, when I went to the Army, you know how she was, as far as that was concerned. So at the house, it was, why do you have to abandon me to go save the world? Can't you just save me? I'm not your personal bodyguard, bitch. Like, seriously, check yourself. And it was in the kitchen in, in the house in Illinois. And Mike was like, you have to actually be strong enough to handle your own stuff. He actually finally did, you know, as far as I was concerned, it's like, you know. Remember the garage? Just remember, you had multiple escape routes when you had the garage in New Jersey. Keep that in mind. <laughs> get over there, and I'm just, you know, I, 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 I see him, like, kind of. <laughs> and I'm chilling there with my dog and just petting him. It's okay, you know, because I was sitting down and he was doing the house party and stuff. And so my dog's just sitting there. I'm sitting there. I'm leaning against the sycamore tree and stuff like that. And I watch him go around the back of the um, blue, it was the blue uh, garage at the time, the corrugated aluminum. And I look and I see Anna going downstairs from the back patio. And I'm like, hmm, what's going on? doing our thing, and he starts, you know, panting or whatever, and so I'm like, oh, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. And so I watch Mike go around the back corner, Anna gets to the front of the garage, and she's like, Mike! around the well, comes back by the house, looks, sees 
that Anna is still in sight. As to in the garage, reaches for his keys. <laughs> this is after Keith Car McDonald's French fries. And so he goes, <laughs> runs up the side of the house to then go, I guess,
I put all sorts of work into it. I did not act. There was, I didn't get to actually do anything. Because, you know, why would I ever have that luxury? Other than I worked for it. But, you know, instead, whatever other people's opinions were in comparison to the reality. So, you know, I wonder what it is to actually relax and enjoy that. I wonder. I have no idea what it is. It'd be great to actually be capable to do so. To actually enjoy. And, and genuinely so. I haven't ever had that luxury. I've constantly been working. You know, in the Army, it is a mandatory aspect of 30 days where you get like 30 days of mandatory vacation each and every year. I haven't ever had that luxury at all. And so I've actually went to earn finances so that way I actually could, so that way I could actually enjoy my own life. Instead, I've dealt with a bunch of thieving, trifling, annoying, what have you, in comparison to actually be capable to do so each and every time. There just has not been a point where I've actually been capable to enjoy in the capacity that I prefer. And, 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 and it's always because every time, every time I listen to certain things, I hear it, I know it has something to do with my biological mother and or my biological little sister, instantly not a good time. Instantly over. Instantly don't want to talk. Instantly, nope, mm -mm. nope, you say anything that would remind me of my biological mother and or my biological little sister, it's over, <laughs> done. And this is true in regards to not just after my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. This is before. This is to the level of what I have dealt with. We're just to be capable to enjoy my own life the way I actually prefer where I could just do something that I could just actually enjoy instead of that crap each and every time. It literally, I don't know how, like, will you have that as an example when it comes to my biological father? This is literally my life where instead of actually just getting to actually do what I prefer, some bitch walks up and has something to say that is nothing more than a reminder from that. In comparison to just shut the fuck up and leave me alone. Where I could just act, if you are going to pretend that you don't know my biological little sister and or my biological mother sent you to speak with me, I don't have time for you. I don't care what my biological little sister wants to know, she can either ask me herself or stay the fuck out of my life permanently. But I don't even want to see her. That's the thing. So don't send that because it's not any capacity in any way that I will ever want to. It's just been that many decades. This many decades where it's literally just don't annoy me. I, I've worked, I've actually worked. There are the books that I authored. So that way I could purchase things that I actually need in comparison. And one of the things that I need is to not ever have to deal with them ever again in any capacity. This is literally why in so many ways, scuba diving, how deep in the ocean can I go and how long can I stay there so I don't have to deal with my biological mother or my biological sister? How fucking deep do I have to go so that I don't have to see them? Because after each scuba dive, all of a sudden, especially when it came to Cozumel, all of a sudden, oh, we're going to be in the fuck! Can you go away? For fuck's sake. Can I just have five motherfucking minutes? Damn. As far as that's concerned. Didn't even.
even get back from Cozumel for a whole week. Do all sorts of work. Oh, let's talk about this. It's so fucking shit. Look at the amount of work. It hasn't ever been luxury. As far as that's concerned. Then Florida, that whole thing, didn't have, didn't even get five minutes. Didn't. Nothing. Just fucking annoyances. They're stupid crap. There hasn't been a point in time in my entire existence that my biological mother wasn't a stupid bitch. There wasn't a point in time my biological little sister who learned from my biological mother wasn't a trifling stupid bitch. And then in regards to my biological father, well, he just kind of followed along and, and then at some point maybe he would wake the fuck up and realize that they were both causing needless problems the whole fucking time. And if they did not involve themselves with my shit, I'd actually have been more like, yeah, well, now that I've had space and time away from you, you know, then maybe. But instead, just the consistent crap. And so I know for a fact when it comes to guys who have been in the military, guy younger sibling, as to those that Oh, come, let's go do this. No, you can do this. No, you should go do that. Why are you? You are so lazy in comparison to how fucking lazy they have been this whole fucking time. Because if they actually chose to do something with their existence in comparison to thinking, because every, I would guesstimate, every younger, you abandoned me, so I'm just not going to talk with you, but I want to know everything. Get the fuck back. You annoying ass motherfucking pain in the I just can't as far as that's concerned. That's not concern either, by the way. That's not care. When you are literally, just literally, you have no idea what their job is. You make their job more difficult when you do that crap. Then you wonder why after a certain point in time, they snap at you. Well, guess what? Wake up. If you would actually just accept that when they're like, hey, I just, I just, like, I'll talk with you when I feel like it, when I have the actual sensation to. Otherwise, back off. Because if you cause me any more needless problems, I don't care what I say that hurts your feelings. Because if you continue to that Facebook poke shit. You don't keep, you just, I don't want to have anything to do with you. It's, it's, it gets to that point, literally. And so, you know, after, after my head injury, then it's, wait, you were, you were in, why, why were you in Wilford Hall? You were on a military installation. None of your business. She went and fucked my now dead ex-husband to try to get him to tell her what I did. And when he couldn't answer anything, she threw this titty baby temper tantrum of all sorts of feelings. She, this is with the lengths that she was willing to go. You wanna talk about a trifling hoe? That's my biological little sister. 1986 Dodge Grand Panorama beige with wood paneling. Pun intended. Oh, with this, that, and the other. Just go away, it's none of your business. And it literally isn't at all. Little siblings seem to think that that shows something that it doesn't. I'm going to guesstimate any veteran, active duty, National Guard reservist that has had that in any capacity. And even if they went in the same branch, it's like, yeah, cool you went in the same branch. Can I be stationed elsewhere? You know, like, I'll, I'll, I'll go over here. No, that's cool. So, you know, just remember, oh, South Korea? Well, then I can, I can do a MAC flight and, like, air assault drop in and get all sorts of details and, like, whatever, whatever, and get back to the, the base and whatever. That's cool. Why would I be willing to do that? Well, because it's needed, but a cherry on top is I don't have to be near my biological 
or my biological mother. Damn it! How the heavens were you stop? Son of a bitch! That I let me let me go into that. When I woke up from my coma and I was in medical hold due and all that stuff, one day I woke up in, in, the, in my barracks room. And I realized, and so I was in my bed or my bunk, and I was looking up at the ceiling, and I was like, shit. Ugh. Got up, grabbed my pack of cigarettes, and walked outside in the street, went out, pissed. I was pissed the fuck off. I was enraged. There was a guy that was walking around the barracks, and he goes, yo, what's up? Interior, but it's a silver vehicle and it's a manual transmission. I'm just, ah, ah, you know, but not and whatever. And so I get to all these different. This is not a car. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just because the interior wall is gray, this is not a car. And so, <laughs> nonetheless, Driving around, and I have the, the sight in that regard, and I go to where I need to go, and so the 11th of September was not the, the same level. But at that time, I had only explained, and I didn't know that was what that was going to be that day. And so I had a vision, and he was like, what? And I was like, I didn't get to go to where I was stationed. And he goes, what do you mean? Well, I didn't graduate basic training. He's like, but you're in medical hold unit? And I was like, yeah. He's like, you actually are really lucky you did that, right? And I was like, why? Because I told him about my medicine. He's like, yeah, most guys don't. If, if they have an injury like that, they don't usually go to medical hold unit. No shit? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, I didn't know that. And he's like, yeah, no, 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 no. Nine people out of ten, if they get injured in basic training, they get put out of what is a facility inspector. You're like, what, what do you mean? And he's like, well, each, your injury had to be that bad for that to occur. No kidding. And he's like, yeah, no. He's like, I don't know whether you consider it a golden ticket for you because if your nightmare is actually accurate, it might be a two-way golden ticket. And I was like, what do you mean? And he brought up because of whatever his MLS was. He was like, well, it technically would be a two-way golden ticket because you yourself, you'd have that you know, luckiness, but the the army would too. I was like, well, you need the armed forces. And he's like, well, yeah, I mean, technically, depending on how things go. And so we talked about the process and stuff like that. And he was just, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of, um, like, and we, you know, talked for a bit. And um, whatchamacallit, he, he was, he was in, he, his 
skin tone was closer to Miss Michelle's. And so we just talked a whole bunch and stuff like that uh, regarding uh, 44, President of the United States of America. If you had skin tone viewpoints, it'd be close. His, his skin tone was closer to Miss Michelle's. And so I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, no, you, you, don't, you don't understand. Like, if you get an injury, in some ways they can do stuff, but it takes you training, so on and so forth. I was like, no kidding, I didn't know that. And he's like, well, if, if you, this is what he said, if you actually, you know, if your nightmare becomes in any capacity, do this, that, or the other. And I was like, well, I'm making the attempts I can. And he was just, well, if it ever comes to that, you do know what you're going to have to do. And I was like, yeah, get to someone that I can get to the, you know, aspect of actually getting assistance to in comparison. Yeah, actually, yeah, you're correct. And I was like, okay, cool. So as long as I go towards, well, what happens if, if they don't believe me? And he was like, well, why wouldn't they believe you? Well, because I had a head injury? And he was like, that will pan itself out. Like, you'll, you'll, no matter what, you'll be capable to, to kind of smooth that out so that way it won't be that big of a deal. And Know, fuck what the haters say. Huh. Huh. Uh, uh, yeah, that's one way to put it. And so, <laughs> he, so we talked a bunch, and he was like, so, so you can see these? I was like, yeah, kind of. And so we talked about a few things. I gave him a few ideas and stuff, and he was just, wow, you can see. And I was like, eh, it is what it is. And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's a two-way golden ticket. And I was like, actually, platinum's better. And he was like, what? And I was like, platinum is shinier. <laughs> it is. It's the shinier metal. It's more durable than gold by far. It is so much more durable than gold. And at a point in time, gold will, yeah, it is as it is. Platinum's the best. I mean, there's also a few other metals depending on what look you're looking for but yeah if you want you know there's and i went through a few as far as i could just oh and so then i had to explain the thing and that's what it's okay biological father's full of all of and all that and wow and so um well what, what what pissed you off about not going to your your duty station in reference to um south korea and i was like because I'm still, like, do you, do you, do you have siblings? <laughs> he was like, yeah, yeah, I got a, I got a few, a lot of, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. My mom and dad were prolific. And I was like, oh, gardening? And he was, no, that's not really what I was referring to, though. They, they do garden. It would be so funny. <laughs> So funny, but anyway, and so I was, <laughs> so I was just, you know, I was like, yeah, I, I can't get to South Korea now because of my duty station. And he was like, well, why not? And I was like, why, why would you want to go to South Korea? And I'm like, let me clarify, I am not going to be a queen for a year. No, 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 queen for life. Life. And he was just, you know about that? And I'm like, mm-hmm. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And he was just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how what happens with the, the females that get stationed out there, right? And I'm like, mm-hmm. That's why I said queen for life. <laughs> and I'm not willing to, um, it is as it is. It is as it is. I've, I've made attempts to tell some females so that way they can whatever in that capacity, but is as it is. Choices are choices. And guy was like, well, yeah, then you definitely are a queen, and you know that. That's, yeah, it is as it is, you know, but, um, you know, I, 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 I see a different capacity. And he's like, what's that? And I was like, well, I'm, I'm still on the same continent as my biological little sister. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, true that, I know how that goes, I know, and it, so it was as it was, but yeah, so I would guesstimate that then 
there's a few who understand that as far as that's concerned. And so, you know, you know, in comparison, though, that guy had said his siblings know their lives. And, you know, he's had to, he's had to put them in their lane. And, and once they understood where their lane was, they understood where their lane was. And it was, huh. All right. How did you do this? Just in case. And he was, he said something, well, you know, when they, and sim, certain similar aspects. And it's like, oh, okay, so that's that. Okay. Huh. Well, I've already done that, though. And so I, we bounced ideas off each other. And I'm like, I've already done that. Damn. 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 just isn't it. <laughs> this, like, you know, it's one thing, you know, like, I understand to a degree, but then there's, like, if, if like, if, if, as soon as my biological father realizes that it's always been, and he's like, oh, you got one of those situations. Your pops don't know that. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he, 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 and he was just, ah. Uh, that, that's ugly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he said, well, don't worry, because at some point in time, they always find out. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> the sooner the better for them, though, in comparison. I have a, have a, have a, I have a some sensation on that. And so, <laughs> it's just, is as it is. I've made attempts, though, but we'll see. And that's 2000. So, in, Texas, <laughs> I didn't mind Mike coming over. That wasn't the issue. That was not, a, it was the fact that Anna was there. I, mean, it, it, I didn't mind Mike. That was, a, it, it wasn't, it wasn't ever a problem when it came to Anna, though. When it came to Anna, he, and every time, every time, it was always Anna being the problem, and or Patricia. Every time. There were certain times where, yeah, 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 but the majority, and so, but because, yeah, if people hadn't done certain choices, regards of, could have taken care of the work I have been working on, literally to get, literally to get the work that I went to get Literally, literally, could have been done between 2009 through 2011. If none of the problems that occurred at McCoy Elementary School hadn't been that way, if the civilian recreational scuba diver sector had not done that, I would not have had those problems to get everything taken care of. So every time, every time, I have had all these other <laughs> aspects of, it's literally just been that in comparison. So if, and so even in San Antonio, that's the thing. Even in San Antonio, I was making attempts to work on stuff, and instead, my biological mother had to be an annoyance. My biological little sister had to be an annoyance. If they had stayed the fuck out of my shit, I would have actually been capable to get stuff done. I would have had the report done. But no, they had to be themselves in comparison to having any intelligence whatsoever. So each and every time that they had ever involved themselves, literally each and every time, wouldn't have had such delays. It literally has always been their just incessant, needless problems. 
literally could have gotten everything done if those people did not involve themselves with my work. And so, you know, as far as the, oh, well, she had a head injury. Yeah, well, you know what? If you weren't a horrific, you know, pain in the ass, sorry excuse for a so-called, you're only an egg donor at that point, um, I wouldn't have had these problems. And people that are where I was born and raised, because she wasn't born and raised in New Jersey. She wasn't even born and raised in New York. So she has absolutely no direct aspect in that capacity. Sure, she went to college there. Sure, she worked there. But she wasn't born and raised there. Huge difference. Huge. Huge difference. Especially with how much I went in different areas. Biological little sister is four years younger. Her first memories are from kindergarten. You want to talk about selective memory loss regarding my biological little sister. And so those particular factors as well. And so it's one of those, I literally, if, if they had stayed in Illinois, if they had stayed in Illinois, let me, let me reiterate this, if they had stayed in Illinois the year of 2005, I would have had the report done. Everything would have been done by December of 2005. Instead, they decided to be annoying and then move and do all that sort of stuff. Literally, each and every time that it, every time Every time, every time. And so when I would tell Mike, I just got to go take care of stuff, it would be, what are you going to do? Okay, here's my opinion. And then I'd go do it, and I wouldn't deal with any needless problems, except for if Anna and or Patricia got involved, each and every time. And so if they didn't get involved and had like done something that would have actually been worthwhile and assistive, which would require them to not annoy me, not bother me, not involve themselves with my stuff, stay out of my way, um, actually, if, to, if gonna actually assist, only assist in what I specifically order. You know, in comparison, I don't want their opinions, I don't care about their feelings, I will dict, I, I will put it in writing, this is what you're allowed on this day, and this is your job for this day. If you fail to comply by this day, this set of whatever is going to be added to. So you will do as I say, because I'm not in the mood for any of this other crap. Otherwise, stay out of my way and let those who can actually assist in the correct way do so, because you are incapable, my opinion. And so it, 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 that's, that's another factor of, so if in regards of since 2000, 2005, I would have been done. All of the work would have been done. Instead, stupid crap. Because most likely their thoughts were, oh, well, she didn't graduate basic training. Oh, she had, a, if they didn't involve themselves, it wasn't for them to involve themselves. If they stayed out of it these situations wouldn't have been. It wasn't for them. But, you know, Crystal Lake, Illinois, and those areas where, oh, television, and she'll just, she'll all of a sudden, like, this is what happens when, so let me clarify this for this, for this understanding, okay? Maid Marian, what occurred, for those who remember? For those who don't or don't know, let me put it in a perspective. I went to support a friend of mine. The director locked the doors because I refused to try out. Re put everybody in that room at risk because he threatened to do various aspects until whatever. When I finally did so and informed him that he was a piece of trash and I did not want to be a part of it, didn't even do anything realistically. I literally read the lines. So let me give you an example. Okay. 
So this is the 29th of June, 2022. You ready? June 2022 through July 2022. Thursday, 30. Friday, 1. Saturday, 2. Sunday, 3. That is how I literally read the lines. Because it was only to just get out of there. And even though I didn't do anything that would ever actually, well, then he knew that I had been a part of church plays because my biological mother didn't keep her mouth shut. As far as that was concerned, and if she had shut her fucking mouth, my opinion, my opinion, I wouldn't have had all of these needless problems. Because, you know, oh, I heard you were in a chorus line. I don't, I didn't want to be in a, this, this, this is what I have dealt with. This, this crap, this is the crap that I've dealt with. This is my biological mother, my biological little sister. This is this shit. This is, you don't go to be excited about an invitation to Marine and Science Technology School with the Navy attachment to want to be involved with that. You don't go and fight to be in the army. To, to th There is no nothing as far as that. When you take in consideration, there was not ever, just think about cheerleading. That's all you have to take in consideration when it comes to those, those church plays. That is all you need to know. How the cheerleading aspect was, that's how it was regarding any church play at all. Each and every one of them. That is the level of. I am sure there have to be. I read about this female called, uh, her name's Drew Barrymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's, I, I would guesstimate there's a bit of a, in a much smaller capacity, of course, but you know, <laughs> this is this level. This is literally at this level where it's just, you know, and, and, and I would guesstimate because of the similar sort of stuff. So in Hollywood, the different capacity compared to, you know, the civilian sector, because there's just so many more. Yeah. <laughs> Comparison. Because, you know, as far as that's concerned, it's death. And so, you know, it's just literally one of those and you wonder why. You just, you shouldn't. You shouldn't have to wonder. So it just really, really shouldn't. It really shouldn't be that difficult at all to figure that out at all whatsoever when it comes to that. And so then there was that in, in 2009, you know, where I went. I literally, okay, so yeah, sure, there was a stuff that happened in 2008, no denying. So 2009, go and work on all this stuff. And so, you know, okay, well, I'll just add this work and stuff to my work that I already was going to take care of. My biological mother, you're writing a book? Yeah, can you stay out of it? Can you stay out of my life? Can you not, oh, you're going to write a book? That's so, don't bother me. I don't need you involved. I don't want you involved. I don't prefer you involved. I don't desire you involved. There is literally nothing about you that I want involved in my work whatsoever. Oh, you don't. Do you really know what you're saying? Can you comprehend, like, is my sentence that difficult to understand? My biological mother, this is in the year of 2009 in my house in Carrollton, Texas. That was my home. Oh, I don't know if you really know what you're saying. At that time, I was calm. At that time, I didn't have the need to raise my voice. At that time. This is the year of 2022. So any connection to any needless problem. 
comprehend that. Fully comprehend that. As far as that's concerned, fully comprehend that. I haven't needed that. So because of the Hypothetically, again, the McHenry County Government Center phone call that you probably didn't even think about. Because it's a government center. What government center has ever had recordings of their own employees' phone calls? The year of 2000, they were already drafting the paperwork for the Patriot Act. How many years had they been working on the Patriot Act? Do you think that they already were doing that by the time of be more intelligent not the only one who would have heard that obviously so you know just this clarification as far as that sort of just <laughs> what is it to actually relax you know, go physically to the location I prefer where I would actually enjoy myself. That would be amazing. I don't need to astral travel because that's work to do so. That does not ever constitute as enjoyment. Just for clarification, for any ignorant moron who would think so. That is only pure work. There is nothing where that is ever enjoyable for me. At all. Whatsoever. I literally created a physical aspect of what I actually needed for myself. I have worked for the finances for my capability to utilize my finances for the physical comfort of what my preferences are instead. So if those types of those individuals would just wrap that around and actually pay attention to those details, understand that they have literally stirred up so much needless crap because of their feelings. I don't care about their feelings. When as many times I have went to accomplish what I've actually needed without any problems, without any drama, where I could actually just enjoy myself, that would be great, but instead, the garbage that is them. So that is something that must be acknowledged. I don't care whether or not they want to accept accountability for their stupidity because of their responsibility. They have no choice but to wake up, accept that those problems were exactly as they were, per the clarification and verification as to the proof. So, you know, I have not ever, at any point in time, allowed anybody to make any financial decisions for me willingly. For that clarification, I would not ever at any point in time, no matter what. And so in that hypothetical of regarding my books, my work, and all that, just as what I was forced to do regarding my daughter, as my biological mother said, just let it go. Just do that. Just, just you know, Take your own advice, Anna. But instead, I'm done with you. It's 
why you're labeled as you are. Same thing when it comes to Patricia. Just accept that. And you are not capable in regards of the other factors anyway. Because when you can't follow actual instructions correctly, or additionally, if you are incapable of actually asking correctly, which there are protocol requirements, if you don't even think that there are protocol requirements, that's your failure. That's the reality. So with that reference to there's my website, www.susanmeeling.com, which is the same as www.ladydoorbell.com. And uh, it's my website. It's not meant to be shared ever at all. But you are allowed to share the links as to my work. Make sure to put the links for my work. I've given examples as far as how to do that in the information section. You know, etiquette, intelligence, you know, as far as that's concerned in the correct capacity. And so, you know, um, what I actually need for myself, not what other people think. No, I, I don't, I don't need that. If I need to know what other people think, I will ask. That's how that goes. If I want to know what other people are thinking, I have the common sense and the respect to ask in comparison. If I want somebody else's or if I need somebody else's opinion, I will ask. If I do not ask, for somebody's opinion, that translates to, I did not ask for somebody's opinion. My journal blog, The Ornery PSA, on my website, www.susanmeeling.com, which is the same as www.ladydorybell.com, it literally has the details. You can see in any journal blog of mine, at any point in time as to how many factors that I can go into. So if I needed opinions, I would ask for them. Especially when it comes to my biological little sister or my biological mother, I haven't asked never ask for opinions. There wasn't ever that. I don't believe I've ever actually asked for anybody's opinion either. At all. I've asked for assistance where I knew what would be best, and instead I got people's opinions. I don't understand as to actually getting things taken care of. I don't understand what the disconnect is to other people's intellect as far as that's concerned. So, you know, hopefully that fixes and repairs correctly. So that way that's not a problem any further. That'd be great. Make life for so many other people much easier. Better. Most importantly, though, I really <laughs> prefer a better life. I've worked for that. I've worked on a lot of stuff, but in reference for myself, I've worked so that way I could actually relax after all of the work that I have already done. It would be great to actually do in the capacities as to my actual preference, as to what I actually enjoy. And so instead, I've dealt with what I've dealt with. And you know, when I've made attempts, it's one of those, how difficult is it for people to actually have enough etiquette to ask me? How difficult is that? How difficult 
difficult has it been for somebody to simply walk up to me in truth, explain to me who they are in actual truth, explain the possibilities as far as an actual offer in genuine truth, to actually have the back and forth and make an actual aspect in truth, not in any other capacity, and then, you know, actually do so, get it done immediately. Does it have to be that difficult? It shouldn't be at all, whatsoever. So, you know, this, this, that's been a big problem, in my opinion, regarding quite a few situations. That if these situations actually were done correctly, immediately, instead of so much bureaucracy, because it's always the bureaucracy that has been the problem. It's always where it's been the problem. Along with others who just, in comparison of just making it actually, you know, like scuba diving, streamlined. Where you don't have to actually jump through all of these stupid hoops, but then again, you know, recreational civilian sector. So while they viewed it as a game, they didn't see what it actually was. Those civilian recreational lazy scuba divers, they didn't ever actually include me in the ways that would be of actual comfort to me at all. They made their choices as to what they thought. So for example, I would show up with my MREs because I was expecting to be capable to set up my tent, do my scuba diving classes, do my work, and then similar to what 2019 was. And so if they wanted to spend time with me, they could do so when I wasn't working. But instead, they threw temper tantrums because they thought that they understood me when I informed them they didn't. And so while they were as they were, the reality was as it was. So in comparison to what I would actually view as actually doing something, in a non-work environment that requires to not be in a work environment. That's that simple. But instead, if they thought whatever they thought, no, no, no. I actually knew what I was doing. You were being intrusive. Most likely you met Anna and or Patricia. And so you didn't do me any favors at all in regards to the civilian recreational scuba diving lazy sector. All of those needless problems that I didn't need, you caused me all sorts of needless problems that I didn't need. So you know, the realtor as to the problems regarding that, you know, if she had contacted my biological mother and or my biological little sister in comparison to, you know, when you're a realtor, your job is to just do your job and then you go on. You don't have anything further to do with it once the deal is done. If you feel that whatever in comparison, no, that's not how it's supposed to be. Your job is literally to get whatever taken care of or what have you, and if, but you are not to intrude as far as that's concerned. That's, that's, that's been an issue regarding a few. So, you know, 
of all people who know that moves are actually difficult, you should know better. Well, comparison to assuming I dealt with that regarding the realtor that the specifics of. I, I wasn't interested in what she was wanting. No, I was specific with what I knew I needed for my property. I've just had too many situations where it's literally just, I, I, I'm so surprised in certain capacities that people have been capable to walk and some people regarding certain factors. I really truthfully am my personal opinion. So, thanks for tuning in. You have a good day. The 29th of June, 2020.